Yeah. Okay, ready? Okay. If I were to ask you to, if you wanted to eat your mother or your father at their funeral, you would almost definitely reply no. And I would definitely reply no. And most Americans would reply no. In the book, in the book, sorry, Jesus Among the Other Gods, Ravi Zacharias asks Americans if they would be willing to eat their father at their funerals. And they almost all said absolutely not, because that's despicable and that's barbaric and that's cannibalism. He then asked people from India the very same question, except he asked them if they would be willing to burn their fathers at their wedding, at their funeral. And they all said no, because in that society, it is culturally acceptable, and it is culturally, what they do as a culture is they eat their fathers at their wedding as a form of respect. And this is a huge example of how society changes us as people. Society really changes us, and we need to take into account the effect society has on us when we're looking around us. If we look at examples of history, in chapter 69, Borstein tells us about how different societies had different views of of history and how that was impacted by their society's views of culture and their society's um, beliefs. So we talked about the Hindus and how their belief of the multi-cycles, how that changed their view of history. It changed how they wanted. They didn't really, it didn't really matter what happened in the past because the world was going to be remade. So it really, history was not very important. He talked about the Muslims and how their view of that, uh, Muhammad being the pinnacle of history, being the high point of history, really changed their society's view of history because they were only focusing on recording the history of Muslims. That was really the only thing that mattered. Then he talked about the Chinese and he talked about how their ancestor worship changed their view of history, how they were, there was a huge emphasis on history and recording your ancestors because in order to worship something, you need to be able to understand it. You need to understand it. So now you're, you might be thinking, okay, what is our view of history and what does eating people at funerals have to do with today? But if we look at this negotiations with other countries, we need to take into account the society that we're negotiating with. An example that is very important and very relevant today is in our discussions with North Korea. Now, recently, we have been discussing treaties and ceasefires with North Korea, and North Korea has agreed to stop um, nuclear testing. And at first you think, oh, that's great. But if we look further, we can see the reason that they've stopped nuclear testing is because they had an earthquake and they had a failed nuclear test, which led to an an implosion in one of their testing facilities. So that's why they've agreed to stop. We've also, we're negotiating with them. And one of the main reasons why we're negotiating with them, why they're willing to negotiate back with us, is because of the sanctions that we put on them. They are in a really untenable situation. Their society is really hurting because of all these sanctions. And they are really hurting as a society and as a people. And they can't survive for much longer. But in negotiating with them, we need to remember that they are part of an Asian society which has a huge emphasis on shame and respect. The whole society is based on shaming people or not shaming people. So our President Trump or our negotiators can't come in and say, we brought you to our knees and your only way out is to come with us. Because that would be in violation of their shame-based society and that would harm all the work that has been done so far to protect it. Some of the specifics of this negotiation is it's no more nuclear testing for North Korea. And they have already agreed to do this. No more nuclear testing. There is a proposed totally denuclearization of the peninsula. And in return, the United States will lift trade sanctions and will go in to help North Korea. So all this, we've seen that basically North Korea is in a very untenable situation because they have very little resources and the trade sanctions are really hurting them. But we can't go in and say that. It's the elephant in the room that can't be addressed because we need to take into account the society that we're dealing with. In negotiations with anybody, in negotiations with someone else, you need to recognize the family that you're dealing with, the society that you're dealing with, and the upbringing that the people you're discussing with have been brought up in. So today we've seen how society impacts us and how we need to take that into account when we're discussing with other countries and specifically North Korea. Thank you.